thank you for the opportunity to sort of draw things to a close with some final overarching uh, points. One of the one of the ongoing issues around uh, capacity and niche and when to do developmental evaluation and when not um, related to the, the question about uh, incorporating this into a context where you have a lot of failure and ineffectiveness um, is that that this is not a solution to uh, problems of low capacity, of managerial uh, low capacity, of corruption, of ineffectiveness. Uh, going back to the quality assurance division between quality control and quality enhancement, uh, developmental evaluation depends upon having certain systems in place at a, a minimum level of effectiveness. The quality control, basic monitoring functions, the capacity to handle data, the capacity to gather uh, data. So those, where those capacities are not there, I think the issue is to, is to begin uh, at an even more basic level of, of building some minimal, uh, credible, reasonable, uh, useful monitoring systems um, that are directed at basic accountability questions. And that would be another place where I'm not suggesting we rush in to developmental evaluation where those things are not already in place. This is at the quality enhancement, uh, excellence, innovation level. It's not a substitution uh, for not being able to manage some basic accountability uh, functions. Um, I worry about calling this process oriented because there's a whole history around that, that that means you're not outcomes oriented. Um, the, when we talk about the basic evaluation question is what's getting developed and the implications of that, I treat developmental evaluation as very outcomes oriented. Uh, but outcomes mapping, which some of you know, and Ricardo who's working on a, a very innovative and exciting approach called outcomes harvesting, is a recognition that in complex dynamic systems, we don't know all of the outcomes in advance. Um, so it's not a matter of just focusing on process. In fact, I would argue it's very outcomes driven, uh, but it's a series of outcomes that occur in stages and that you need to know what outcomes have been produced at some moment in time to see what outcomes are gonna get added to that, what the next stage is, what emerges that's unanticipated uh, along the way, and what the interactions are among those things. So, I worry about it sticking it into, oh, it's process oriented. What I do say about it is that a lot of evaluation is methods driven. Uh, a lot of it is accountability driven. Developmental evaluation is fundamentally relationship driven. It's about the relationship between the people who are implementing change and innovating and the evaluator who is providing them with systematic reality testing feedback to look at what their results are achieving, uh, to learn about that and to apply it going forward around the issue of what's actually getting developed. Are problems getting solved that they care about? Are they making a difference as they adapt to changing uh, conditions? Can we connect the dots between what they're doing um, and what results are achieving. Uh, that's a challenging process. It invites people to, to, uh, to think deeply about things. Uh, I worry that uh, in the methodologically driven nature of evaluation, we've gotten a little bit overly mechanical about the gathering and interpretation of data, so that what you've seen all day long is this is as much about thinking about the implications of operating in a complex dynamic system as it is about uh, data gathering uh, and data interpretation. Uh, so it does integrate these kinds of activities to a greater extent. And the way that I got involved in this as a final benediction was not that I set off to become a developmental evaluator, but taking you back to where I was uh, at the beginning of the morning in the Blandon Community Leadership Program, 
I began doing this in response to clients who wanted a different kind of evaluation. It came out of doing utilization-focused evaluation. It came from working with people who said, formative and summative don't meet our needs, traditional M&E doesn't meet our needs, traditional accountability approaches don't meet our needs, here's what we want to do, and we want to innovate, and what we find is that innovators report that one of the biggest barriers they face in innovation is evaluation. That rather than doing good, we started this morning with the Genesis story, doing good, rather than doing good, evaluation is doing harm. It interferes with adaptation, it interferes with innovation. We've got a group of people who are hungry for information, who are hungry to change what they're doing, to learn about what works and doesn't work. And they need some approaches that respect that and work with them in a way that brings about those differences. That's how I wandered into this uh, and how I continue to be involved in it. Those of you who uh, find some kind of, of opening there where it may inform part of your work, I uh, certainly invite you into it. I would certainly understand a lot of you would want to avoid this or in settings where you can't do it. And whether you call yourselves early adopters or simply crazy people um, who want to do things differently or whatever other label you attach to it, I'd be interested in hearing about your experiences, um, learning from you as you attempt to work this, and let me thank you very much for your patience and engagement today. Thank you.